lecture, we will understand how we can maintain our applicationable cache without using any external libraries. For that, I am going to start a Spring Starter application, that is Spring Boot application. I will name it as Cache Example. And here I will use the libraries like Spring Web just to hit any web APIs. And I will use Actuator. I will use DevTools to use and the changes and load the things at the runtime. I will go with the 2.6.10 version. Here, first I will create a S controller. I will name it as Imploy controller in which I will going to create APIs. I will annotate with add the test controller. First, I will go with the post mapping and I will create the employees object. So, I will create a method in which I will be returning a string and I will set the employees in our cache. So, the string will be returned as OK. And here I will take employee as an object. For that, I am going to create a POJ of employee. In the employee, I am simply creating three things. First, first is the ID of that employee, second is the username, and third is the age of that employee. I will go to the source and create all the getters and setters using source only and also two string method. So our employee object is created. Here I will take the employee object in the body of the post method. So I will annotate with at the rest request body. So here I am going to set the employee object in the cache. So for that I am going to create a constant and this is the way we create a constant. We will maintain a map in which we will take the object as a key and object as a value and I will name it as emp cache and in this emp cache which is marked as a static method of cache constants I will call this emp cache and store this employee object in the method itself. So it will not be stored in the database but it will be stored in the cache. So I will simply call cache constants dot that map name so cache constant dot emp cache and I will simply put that object of employee in the cache itself. So I will put the username as a key and employee object e as the object itself that's it so i'll pass the employee object and put it in the cache constant map of that cache constant and i'll return successfully added in the cache that's it so our post method is complete in which i am creating an object and putting it in the cache cache is nothing but a map which i'm using here now i'm going to get that object from the cache so for getting that object i'll pass the username of that employee in the url itself and it will be passed as a path param or path variable so i'll be using here as the spring object of path variable and this will be mapped with the username which i am passing in the url and also i'll take as a string that is the username and it will be username and from the cache constant which i have just created the map i will try to get this employee object from the cache itself so get this employee from cache so from this cache, the map which I created that is emp cache, I will just call get method and provide the username and as we have passed the key as the username of that map, so it will be returning the employee object. So I will simply call the return method and pass this as an employee object. So for that, I will have to return it as an object, not an object but exact employee and also here I am going to cast it to the employee, whatever the object we are getting. So it will be mapped as an employee object. Now I, all the things are running fine. I will just run it as Spring Boot application. So my Spring Boot has started now. Now let's see how the things are working. It has started at port number 8080. So I will open the postman. This is my post method in which I am going to create the employee. So if I check the employee, here I am going to pass the employee object and through this URL and put it in the cache. So I will check the employee object and pass it here. So employee object has three things, ID, username and age. So I will create the JSON object of this employee here in the body of the post method. So I will pass ID as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever it will be, username as Sumit, age as 27. So after passing this. I will call this method of employee and it will return me successfully added in cache which I have passed it here in the post method. Now I am going to get it through the get method. This is the get method and I will be passing the username in the get method. So after passing this username I will be getting the object from the cache because the key is the username itself. So as you can see this is the key and this is the actual username which I need to pass in the URL. 
So I'll pass this in the URL as a username and simply it will return me the object of that employee. This is what it is doing. But this is a basic concept and basic one level of cache which is being maintained in the map. So if you dig down into this, it will return the size of the map and you'll get to know that the things are changing in the real time. But we will be seeing how two levels of cache are being maintained, which is actually the real time project. So just to show you for first level of cache, I'm going to print all the size and employee object so that it will be more visible and more uh, transparent to you. So what I'm doing, I'm providing certain loggers here and simply I'm going to set few more objects in the cache. So I'll pass here as submit related one, two, three, and I will click on, let me clear the console part and add the size of the map itself. So what I'm going to get is the size of the map at the real time that how the size is being changed so that it will be more clear that it is coming from the cache which we have provided. So map size is nothing but the cache size which we are maintaining right now in the first level cache. After this, we will see the second level cache. For that, we will see after analyzing the first level. So I provided much of the loggers here. And now let me clear the console part. And now let me call it from the postman. So this is the post method. I'm passing this object cache added. And it, as you can see, initially it was zero size. The cache size was zero. But after we have added this employee object, the size has increased to one. Now, this was about the post map, map mapping in which we are just putting in the object. Now I'm going to get it from the database. So I'll pass this username and I've got the username. But as you can see, since we are only getting, so no size has not been changed. So no changes in the size of the cache has been done. So it is one itself. So this was about how we are implementing the label one cache or you can say first level of map method. Now I'm going to show you how the actual implementation are being done in the real time projects. And this is actually which is being done, which I'm going to show you. So we don't generally go with single layer of map, but we generally go with a two layer of map like this. The internal object remains with a map itself. So we have two keys. First key is the master key, or you can say the parent key. And second is the inner key, which is maintained as map. So what I'm going to do here, we have created map of map, map inside a map. So for that, I'm going to pass not the employee object, but uh, some other object, which will be passing all the employees object inside it. And also the parent key, which is the outer key. So I'll create a class for that. That is cache object and cache object will have the parent key or master key, whatever it be. So here I'm going to make it as a string and make it as a main key. And this main key, will tell me which employee object needs to be passed for this main key and to be implemented in the database or in our cache in this point of time. So I'll provide the getters and setters for this and also two string method. I'll click right click generate two string method. So our cache object POJO is created now. So I'll pass this cache object POJO. This cache object POJO will be passed in place of employee, which will contain through which master key or which main key it should be mapped. So as you can see, employee object is passed here. But for that, we need to change this employee object here. So I'm going to change it with the object which I've created now, that is cache object. And I'll name it as CO. So I'm going to first check whether what data is coming in CO. So I'll maintain the log there. And now I'm going to provide check whether the cache contains this main key or not. If it does not contains the main key, then do what? Do create a hash map and put it against this key. So if it contains directly put the employee object in that main key. So what I'm doing here, I'm going to get that map through get main key and put it as a employee username in the main key. Otherwise I'm going to 
call this one more time and create a new hash map for that particular key so that further it should be put in that particular hash map the internal hash map so i'll pass zero dot get main key if it does not contain this main key then create a main key and pass the object of hash map that is map under map here and after putting it here then you should call this employee object to set in that particular main key map so for that let me filter it out and do some rectification so now it looks great that if it does not contain this main key then create a hash map and after that just put that object of employee under that main key map now the post mapping is done now going to get that object for get, getting that object i'll pass the main key and main key will return all the hash map details which is contained inside that main key so it will simply return the object coming out from that cache dot get and i'll call the main key here so i'll pass this here and also main key will be passed in the path param and instead of co dot main key i'll just pass the key which is coming from the url that is the main key and it will be returning me an object object of map but for now let me change it to cache cache object and let me remove this part let me remove this part also now all the logs has been removed now i'm going to call this employee object and pass the cache object from here so it has two things that is main key and the employee object so i'll passing here the main key because since our object has been changed so i'll tell the key cache that this is the main key inside this main key go and get the map and in that map put my employee object which i am passing here so object has been successfully passed in that main key so main key has a map and inside this map we are just passing the employee object in which username is the key and employee is the main object and i am going to get all the details of this main key so for that i am just passing the main key here that is 1 2 3 in my case it says class class exception so for the class class exception i am not going to return the cache object but i am going to return the map itself so now i am going to again start the application and again hit the post method so now here i am going to pass this object again call this method so as you can see it is saying that this is the object which is contained inside that main key now i am going to pass few more objects so if i change this existing object and change it to let it be sumit only and let it be 15 age should be let it be 28 and i'll pass it to the same main key that is 1 2 3 and i am when i'm get i'll get two objects why because main key contains a map and map contains these all objects again i'm going to pass one more object let it be amit and let the age be somewhat like 31 and let the id be 1 and the main key is the same only so i pass three objects and when i'll hit send see sumit amit and sumit 1 to 3 all three objects are coming so the main key contains a map and that map contains three objects so now i'm going to get not only all the objects but i'm going to get a specific object for getting a specific object i will call this method in which i'll pass the main key and an object of map will be returned and from that map i'll ask to get the object of that particular username only for getting those things i'll pass two things in the url that is the main key and the username of that particular map in which we'll get the second level of map so i'll pass the username here again and now this cache constant contains a map so basically from that i'll pass the employee here and the object will again i'll call the username to be found inside the map and i'll cast it to employee object and i'll restart it 
now when I'm going to call this, it will call the map through main key and the username, exact username it will find through the username which we are sending. So he, if I pass Sumit here and if I pass 1, 2 and if I pass age 30, so when I'm going to get it, I'll find that two things are coming, Sumit and Amit. Now I'm going to get the exact object. For the getting exact object, I'll pass 1, 2, 3 as a main key. And also after hyphen, I'll pass the exact username of that particular employee. So for getting that, if I pass Sumit as a username after that particular main key, that is the main key is one, two, three, and after that I'm passing Sumit as a user key, username, main key and username. So it will call the map through main key. And from that map, it will pull out that, that particular employee with the username Sumit through this get method. So if I go to this postman and click on send, see only that particular object is coming only. But through the main key, we are getting all the objects. So in this way, we handle the two level of caching. That is map contains a key and value remains a map also. So two layers of fabrication are there. If a parent key is provided, all the objects coming inside that particular map will be coming. But if parent key is provided along with the inner maps, key then exact object is provided so first was to get set in the cache second was to get object to main key and third method was to get the exact object using main key and the inner maps key so this was about how we can create a cache in our application without using external libraries and whenever the application starts it loads all the things in the cache and we pull out the objects from that particular cache only so thank you all for watching the video.